It's been more than 24 years since the start of one of the most high profile missing child cases. 11 year old Mikkel Biggs was abducted while riding her bike outside of her Mesa home and never seen again. Her little sister was only nine years old at the time, but has spent much of her adult life advocating for her sister. Now she's been hired to help train officers on how to better, better deal with families of missing children and victims. True Crime Arizona's Brianna Whitney is here. You sat down with her sister to learn more about this, and this is a huge opportunity for her. It's a big deal. I met her a few years ago. We've done some stories together, mm -hmm. and now this is a really great opportunity. She's basically been hired to bridge the gap between families who have a missing person and the investigative side from law enforcement. As a little girl, she watched things play out during the search for her sister that have affected her as an adult, so she's already working on ideas of what to teach officers around the country who will deal with families just like hers. Her blonde hair in the sunset was very, like, flowing behind her. Her 1999 disappearance quickly gained the attention of America at the time. She would do, like, like a smaller circle and then, like, a bigger circle. 11-year-old Mikkel Biggs riding her bike, waiting for the ice cream man one second. The next vanished. Her bike tire still spinning when Kimber Biggs came back outside. Kimber was two years younger than Mikkel and only in their house for 90 seconds when Mikkel was taken. It's a different type of effect on me than it is my parents, but it's still very traumatic. It's an unimaginable situation that's been a part of her life, but now in her 30s, it's led to something new. I just got a gut feeling that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. While Kimber isn't new to advocating for her sister, she's gotten the attention and respect of law enforcement, and now she's starting a new journey because of it. She was recently hired by the National Criminal Justice Training Center to teach a training course to first responders and officers on how to best work with families with missing children and loved ones. This is what it's like to be a victim and here's how you can improve how you work with victims families and you know here's what has been done that is beneficial to them. In Mikkel's case she says a misstep in the police investigation quickly came to mind. They kind of jump to conclusions in my family's situation and that made the whole thing that much harder. Those conclusions casting suspicion on her own father. Time and resources spent on him as a potential suspect only to have that not be the case in the end. It's really hard not to feel bitter about that. I mean not only for my dad's sake but for the case's sake, for Mikkel's sake. What if? There's always going to be that what if. What if we miss something because of that? Kimber says she also wants to focus on how officers can ask questions with more compassion, especially with young kids like she was at the time her sister went missing. Mikkel's disappearance has shaped Kimber's life, a situation she never asked for and was forced to grow up with. But now it's not just having to talk about that horrific day, but being able to actually smile about the difference she's about to make for other families and detectives, all in Mikkel's honor. Taking something horrible that happened to me and using that to do good, that's a really amazing feeling. The National Criminal Justice Training Center programs like the one Kimber will be a part of are funded by federal grants from the Justice Department. Kimber will undergo training in October and could begin speaking at trainings all around the country as early as November mm. of this year. It's a huge deal for yeah, her. Yeah, it is. So Kimber only talked to you about this. Yeah, right now she and had What is the latest in, in Mikkel's case? So a lot of people know this case. It's very high profile. Um, there's not a lot of movement in the case. We do know the number one suspect in the case is already in prison. Mm -hmm. He's a convicted rapist and sex offender. Um, that's somebody that her parents actually talked to while he was in prison, but he is wow. not giving any more information. You might remember in 2018, it was a big deal when a dollar bill was found in Wisconsin. It said, yes. I'm Mikkel Biggs. Yeah. I was kidnapped from Mesa, Arizona, but I'm I'm alive. Right. There's no way to trace that back. And Mikkel's name was not spelled correctly. So mm -hmm. investigators and her own family does not believe that was truly written by Mikkel, mm -hmm. but it certainly stirred things up because everybody, not just Arizonans, but people all over the mm -hmm. country, obviously want Mikkel to be found. Yeah. yeah, it's really powerful to see Kimber kind of channeling her pain into a purpose, into mm -hmm. a life's yeah. work. It's, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. And you saw that video of Kimber when she was nine years old just at the it's, time. Yeah, uh, she's so it's much older wild. now yeah. and, and she's really this has shaped her own life mm -hmm. and how she parents her son yeah. and things like that. So this is a really good thing for her and their entire family. Yeah, probably rough, but definitely a good thing she's doing. Yeah. Thank yeah. you.